Okay, here's the design we're painting on this video. I've titled this Cup of Love, and I just had so much fun painting this. I love painting cup and saucers, so um, uh, this is so fun, so versatile. You can change the flowers in it to put daisies in or what, whatever flower you want to put in there, but um, it's a fun, fun project, and I show you how to do the cup and saucer by itself, so if you want to do it without any flowers, you have that option and um, the color palette. You can change the color palette up to uh, make it match your decor. So I can't wait for you to paint this. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started on this project right here. So I've got my board. This is Masonite. So um, it's it's pretty easy to paint on, but you still have to prepare it. So what we have done to get to this point right here is uh, apply a coat of multi-purpose sealer with a dampened artist sponge. Okay, this is this is an extremely important step. You do not want to skip this step ever on any surface. I even use it on glass. Um, I've got glassware that I've used on a regular basis, and I don't ever have to worry about it. Don't skip this step. I can't tell you how important it is. Damp artist sponge. Apply a nice coat on there. Let it dry. Lightly sand it with a very ultra fine sanding pad. I mean, this doesn't even feel like it's sandpaper. Or a brown paper bag will do the same thing. Okay? Um, once you've done that, then you are going to apply two coats of blush pink with the same dampened artist sponge. Two coats. You're going to lightly sand the final coat when it's dry. Wipe your sanding dust off. And now we are ready to apply our stencil on here. So we're going to be using a makeup sponge, or you can use a stencil brush or an ink, inking dauber, fingertip dauber, um, you know, anything that you have that you like to use to stencil with. The options are plenty. I like to use makeup sponges. All right, this is the stencil we're gonna use. It's scrolls. Okay, that's the number, ST009. I'll have this all in my packet. It's um, by Stencil Art, designed by Ann Grenier. And that's the number again, scrolls, and that's the website. But all that information will be in my packet. scroll and the paint we're going to use is oyster pearl it's a beautiful paint I mean the background is just we're putting it in the background and look at that oh I just love that that is so so pretty now I painted my original one like eight months ago or longer so um, hopefully my memory will work well for me and how I painted it <laughs> as I do this video so we shall see Okay, a dry makeup sponge. Put a little bit of this on your palette. Okay, so you're going to take your makeup sponge and just pull a little bit out and tap it on the sponge. Makeup sponges are not absorbent, so you do not want a big, huge buildup of this paint on there. Because you won't be happy. All right. Let's just put this on here any old way that you like it. And we'll come and fill in down here. Come move it up just a little bit. Um, maybe I'll turn it this way and do it this way. I'll leave that a little bit open there where the cup and saucer is going to go. We still, I mean, we're still going to do all of our stenciling down here. So straight up and down pouncing. Don't push on it. You don't want to push it or mush it or, you know, do what you do with a stencil brush. This is straight up and down pouncing on here. This is just background stuff, so it's very subtle in the background. You can really only see it when the light catches it, which I really like that. 
Now when you're using a, a fresh new stencil, you'll be able to see where you left off. What you stenciled and what you didn't. So I will lift up an edge on mine and check what I've stenciled. We don't want thick paint here, we just want this is subtle in the background. We don't want any thick stuff going on. Let's see. All right, let's put a little bit more. Could be a little bit darker through here. All right, let me have a peek again. See where else I want to put some. Let's get a little bit more up here. Take your time. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. You don't want a lot of bleed under on this. Alright, let's put some down here. A little bit more paint on my palette. some in there and kind of fit that. I feel like it's a big, big gap in there. Straight up and down pouncing. This will give you a nice light coat. And then you can decide if you want to do a little bit more. I'm going to put our border on here too, so a lot of this that's at the edge will be covered. Alright, let me have a look. That's probably good enough because we're going to put our cup and saucer right in there. So I think I want to put a little swirl right there, so I'm just going to put this one. Kind of fill that little gap right there. I have my finger covering the stencil here so that I don't accidentally stencil and something I don't want. Okay. Ooh, baby. Look at that. So pretty. I'm going to put a little bit coming up through here because that's... Let's see. Maybe I'll just do that little piece right there. border going on so I'm going to get this completely dry. Now your makeup sponge, just lay it on your palette, okay? Let it completely dry on that paint edge and then when it is completely dry go in and cut the end up off and um, you'll remove all that hard dry paint and your makeup sponge is good for the next time you use it. I use my makeup sponges till there's literally nothing left of them so um, don't throw a big makeup sponge like that away because it's uh, it's still usable for a lot of stenciling. Okay, let me get this dry and let me get my pattern lines on. I'm getting ready to transfer my pattern on here, so I just wanted to show you how the pattern is going to come. It's going to come like this, um, and you can transfer it all in like this. Or just transfer the cup. I'm going to show you how to paint the cup without the roses in it so that if you ever want to finish out just the cup 
you can do that. So what I have done is I've taken both of these patterns and I've traced them onto my tracing paper which you can buy in a tablet form like your palette paper or in a roll. Um, Hobby Lobby sells it. Michaels I believe sells it as well in rolls. Um, they probably sell it in tablet form too. So, um, so I just traced out this one and the cup. But when, when you do yours you can add these lines in there so you know where your your roses will, will go. When you transfer your roses on you'll know where to put them. So this is how the pattern comes in my packet and I've just chosen to trace them off separately. Okay, so I've got my cup on here. I think it's pretty even with um, my original here. I think they're pretty close to lined up to where they were. Okay, so I'm just going to take my tracing paper, which I don't usually use a piece this big, it's just the one that I ended up grabbing. Okay, then you're going to take a stylus and you're going to transfer on your lines. Now you don't want to transfer on these little bitty detail lines and actually all the lines on the cup and this line right here you can leave off for now because we've got a base coat and, and the little lines on the handle because we have to base coat everything in first. So you basically want the cup. You need the front of the cup. This is just a, a guide so you can barely put that in there. If, this is more for if you're going to finish out the entire cup but uh, you can put it there as a guide if you need it. We're going to shape uh, transfer on the shape of the cup, the handle, the shape of our plate, all of our lines. We're going to leave off any of the lines that are on the inside. Okay, we just want we want the outer line. So when you do this one, you're going to come across. the front here and all the way around okay but we need we need this one that's on the top as well because we need to know where that line will be okay Hopefully I'm pushing hard enough for my lines to transfer. And we just need the shape of the cup and the bottom of the cup. The shape of the handle. Okay, and the shape of the rim. I'm going to put both lines on here and just maybe just a dash line back there. Let me see if I got everything transferred. Okay. I think it all transferred okay. So you can see those are those are all the lines that you need to start with because we've got to get our base coats on and then we'll come back in and add our detail lines in here. So we're going to paint I'm going to go ahead and remove this, but if you think you might need your pattern to stay for later to add things, then just leave it taped on. Just leave it flipped up, and then when you're ready to add your, your detailed lines, you can just lay it back down and add your lines in there. Okay? So we're going to base coat our uh, teacup and our saucer in with um, two to three coats of light buttermilk. Okay? Um, you want to thin your paint a little bit with some water. So I'll just do a little bit on this cup so that you can see what I mean. I haven't gotten any of my brushes out yet, so I've got some ones that I use for another project laying here. I'll just grab it. This, this one is, you want to make sure all the water is out of your brush, so... You want your brush damp, you got to wake it up with water to get the bristles ready to go. Okay, and then we're just going to come in here and we're going to paint every section in. 
by itself. So I'm going to paint the bowl on, which I forgot to draw my line in down here. I'm going to try not to paint over those lines right there. I'm going to come back and erase them. And I'm going to have to add a little bit of water to my paint here. Get my spritzing bottle. I always spritz this side of my palette so I have clean water. This is for thinning my paint and for floating. Right. I want my paint to flow nicely. I don't want globs of paint or ridges in my paint. So I thin my paint down so I can get a nice smooth coat. And that sometimes means you got to put three coats on there. And you're just going to have to be okay with that because in the end you're going to have a very smooth looking piece as opposed to a piece that has ridges and bumps and stuff you don't want. Alright, I'm going to paint inside. Let me erase. those erasure shavings away from your paint. Never brush them towards your palette. Okay, I'm going to shape follow right here. I'm following the shape of that saucer. I put my paint in. Okay, I'm going to go over here. Work on this. i got a little bit of wobbly lines here, so when I paint that, I'm going to have to smooth those lines out. Alright, I'm going to paint this down here. I'm going to get all my first coats on and try not to paint over my graphite lines. If I do, like I just painted over that one, it's it's in there. It's not you're going, to, going to erase. It's not coming out of there. It's in there forever. So, use a, a brush that is the appropriate size for the area that you're painting that you feel most comfortable using. I feel pretty comfortable using a pretty large brush, so I'm using an 8 flat here. So I want you to use the brush that you are most comfortable using. I'm going to put a little bit down in here in the center. This is, again, just a guide. So I know where I'm going. This will also help when we go to paint in our roses so we're not putting so many coats. So that's just a rough coat. Just one coat in there is all you're going to need. Uh, let me grab a smaller brush to finish out these other areas. And then I'm going to get it dry and apply my second coat. Uh, let's see what I got for a round brush here. I'll get it up on the easel for you so you can see it better. So my lines are wobbly through here too, so I'm going to Kind of smooth that out. Smaller brushes, you have to load a lot more. And I have to do the rim here. Again, the 
that's a little wobbly. So I'm just going to paint over my graphite lines because they were wobbly. That's a little fat. I don't want it quite that fat. We are only going to see a small amount of the rim on here. Right, right about there. You can just barely see it peeking out from underneath there. So you don't necessarily have to finish out the rim, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So that if you want to paint this without adding the roses, you can add any flowers you want to in it. Then uh, you'll, you'll be able to do that. Okay, so there's our first coat. Very, very rough. Very rough indeed. Alright, let it dry, get your second coat on, and then you can kind of see where you need to adjust shape-wise. So, like right here, I feel like this edge is higher than this edge, so when I paint my second coat, I'm going to bring that up a little bit higher here. Okay, so it's a little bit straighter line, not so cattywampus there. Okay, dry, second coats, put your pattern back on, add on just your your lines across here and this line across here don't add the little swirly things in there the little um, comma things don't add those those will add at the end okay and um, yeah you can go ahead and add your um, little petal leaves down here if you want okay we're not going to add the the pattern lines in for the roses yet Like this, uh, this line here. We're not going to add that in yet. I mean, if you've already put it on there, awesome. We're just going to paint over it. We're not going to paint around it. So um, you can wait and add that on later, or don't add it on at all, and just do just make your pattern separate and set them in there wherever you want to set them. You can have them a little higher, and I've got them, you know, a little bit more controlled in there so you know that's an option for you so let me get this dry and get the second coat on here okay it's been a couple of days since I worked on this um, I did lay my pattern back on and transfer my lines on here they're a little bit dark so if you get yours this dark erase them back I'm going to erase them back before I paint them because I don't want them to be um, set in my paint needs to be down here okay so I'm going to remove my pattern off of here and when we get ready for the flowers I'll put the shape of the flower pattern uh, petals you know the outside outline of them to put on here um, before we move on to painting onto this though we want to go ahead and draw in our line here and I have it set, um, it's about in between a quarter of an inch and a half. So what is that? Three eighths. So you can make yours as wide as you want to. So I'm just going to put this on here real quick. So we have this guide. For later this will be for later when we trim out the the border okay so let me erase my lines back just enough for me to see them just a little bit not all of them will need to be erased those on the cup there are pretty light but these back just a little bit and I am barely erasing on this I should really take a uh, super soft brush and um, brush those away instead of using my hand because my hand could smear the the pencil so this is a big um, just mop brush. 
makeup brush, anything that you have. Just super dark, kind of bugs me. Okay, I don't want to erase them back too far where you can't see them. I'll just brush that off. Okay, so we are ready to start painting. So I'm going to get my easel out and get it set up and get some paints out. And we're going to go, go, go on this thing. I think you're really going to enjoy doing this. All right, I've got it up on my easel now. So we're gonna start adding some colors onto our teacup. And we're gonna get some blush pink out. And some wild berry. And these are the two colors that are on our teacup. And you're gonna want to have a good detail liner and a good round brush and a good flat brush. So, I'm not sure that's the best liner for me. Yep, it's got a wild hair. No wild hairs. That one kind of wants to split, so we'll see how it ends up working. Okay, so I've got a two round, or you could get a one round. Okay, this is a Winsor Newton brand. I love their round brushes. You can get them at Hofcraft. And then I've got a six chisel. This is a low Cornell brand. If you have a hard time finding their brands, you could try the brush guys. They might have some. Or any brand that has a chisel edge brush. We're going to need this for this. And our round brush will be for everything else. <clears throat> And then our detail liner will be for our very thin lines that are here. So we want to paint in this stripe and this stripe. And they're painted in with the blush pink. So I'm going to wake my chisel brush up. Okay. So this is our blush pink. Yes, this is what we used on the background. So we're just going to fill in our stripe here. Try to get it where you can see it, hopefully. And I need a little bit of water. So let me spritz my... Let me fill my mister. It's getting low on water. Get a little bit of water. Mixing it with that paint. The paint, when it first comes out of the bottle, it's just too thick and it, it needs a little bit of moisture in it. So I'm trying to keep my straight edge here. Take your time. There's no need to rush. Okay. Um, I might get a bigger round here for this one. I think I'll go with a four round. Because I think my chisel brush might be a little bit too big. If I had a four out, I could probably get by with a four chisel. the four around, a little bit of water. And just fill it in. Now we're going to need two coats on everything. So I will go off camera to get the second coat on. A little bit of water, a little bit of paint. Okay, 
When I get uh, this all dry, I'll probably try and remove my graphite lines before I go any further. Okay, and everything else is the, the darker, the wild berry. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go with my two round, a little bit of water, pull out some wild berry. And this goes on the outer rim. of the plate. Take your time. A little bit more water that's not flowing. You don't want your brush to be dragging where you feel like you have to get a, give a ton of pressure to it. So add a little bit of water so your paint will flow very nicely off of your brush. Been a while since I videotaped too, so I hope that I will be keeping you on camera shot. And anywhere where we feel like we've gone over something like that, got a little boo-boo red there, we can fix that up with some of our light buttermilk. Okay, this down here at the bottom of the cup. getting the flow here. I feel like I'm struggling. So when you're struggling, you either need more paint or more water on your brush. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's add our lines here and our lines on our handle. And we're going to do that with the detail liner. We'll want to thin our paint down just a little bit with some water so it will flow very easily off of our brush. Make sure there is no water on your ferrule. You don't want that rolling down and making you unhappy. Make sure you're on camera. You want to make sure the lines that you've drawn in are very straight, you know, are the, the shape that you want them to be. They're curving around at this cup. Kind of got off my line there a little bit. Got that one a little wobbly. white straight doesn't look like all right we got a couple up here on our 
our handle. And I think that's all we have there. Let me erase this line right here. Oops, the paint was still wet. So if you make a boo-boo like me, just dampen your brush and erase the paint away. Now, I am going to have to adjust those lines because they are not where I want them to be. So I can very easily erase them with a little bit of water and this white eraser and straighten them up. Do not rub really hard here because if you do, you're going to go all the way through your layers of paint. This is just a light erasing. line again, see if I can get it straight. Okay, that looks better. Erase some lines. Any lines that you can erase on what you've already <clears throat> painted in is good. And you can kind of see if you need to do any adjusting on anything. shavings go away from your paint palette. You don't want to get those in your paint, that's for sure. Okay, so I need to bring this color a little bit more right here. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go off camera and get the second coat on these colors and we'll be right back. Okay, one place I forgot to show you to paint was up here on this lip. Now, we don't want a really hard line on my original one because I wasn't sure what I was going to do as I was designing. I kind of have a little bit of a ridge in there. So we don't want to have that ridge so I'm just going to take a side load a little bit of this paint and kind of try to soften that down where there's no ridges in there. We don't want we don't want ridges. We're not going to see hardly any of this color. Or on along the edge, really the only place and it really depends on where you set your your pattern once you put it on here. The only place I can really see it peeking out is right underneath there. So, um, definitely don't want any ridges in there. Okay. I still feel like I have some lines that maybe could erase back a little bit better. I'm going to paint over that so it's not coming off. Alright, I think I'm going to take my, um, light buttermilk and do a little bit of touch up here with a small round. And I don't want to see any of my pencil lines so I'm going to go over the edge of my handle here. 
which should come over a little bit more, so I will create that. I'm really up on the very tip of this brush, just kind of skimming along. Just my line back here. See how we look over here. Touch up here. Fix that little wobble in my line there. This is pretty much straight paint. No need to thin this down, but you do want to stay more up on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna put some down here where my when I erased my pencil, I got a little bit of mess down there. And like that. Alright, just any place. I don't I don't really want to see any of the the pencil stuff. Or the graphite. I do still have my pencil lines that shows the shape of the cup and the shape of the bottom of the cup, so I'm going to leave them on there, and hopefully as we apply some uh, more layers of paint, they will get covered up. Okay, so I haven't gone back over these thin lines yet, and I do want to go back over them and make them a little bit darker. So. Let's thin some of this wild berry down. I'm going to make sure I don't have any water on my ferrule. And try and stay up on the tip of the brush as much as possible and follow exactly on that line. time. Okay, and let's do the ones on the handle. Up on the very tip of the brush. Follow the shape. Looks pretty good. 
All right, we're ready to start adding a little bit of detail onto this cup. So let's get our oyster pearl out. We're going to put our design on this and this. And then we'll start doing some shading. So our oyster pearl, it's almost a transparent color. Um, but it's a very pretty color. Now, all I did was do some um, some little comma strokes along there, and then with some dots in between. Nothing real fancy. And then down here, I did single comma strokes going around the cup this way with a dot in between. So um, you know, it's it's really if you want a different design on yours, go for a different design. Like I said, you're not going to see this very much at first. You really won't see it until you have the cup lifted or the design lifted a certain way. So then I did one, two, three. And they're just offset just a little bit. One, two, three. Okay, that one's a little thick on the paint. Okay, then with this one, I probably started here. Comma. Then a dot. And a dot, comma, and a dot. Um, so you can't see that going behind. So I started here with a comma and a dot, comma, dot. That's a really big comma. see how that looks. I also outlined, but it doesn't show up a whole lot on here. I outlined with this color. Because it's a little bit of a, a transparent color. So it kind of it kind of takes on the look of whatever is underneath of it. I'm gonna stay up on the very tip here. Go on this edge. It's almost very difficult to see where it's going. I mean, if you want to eliminate this, you can. All right. So I have to apologize for my squeaky chair, man. It is just a squeaker. All right, on that pink line, just on the very edge of it, stay up on the very tip. Don't make it a wide, wide line. We want to go next to that dark pink, too. for me to remove some of it. Just using a damp brush. Just want to thin that just a little bit. Okay, where else did I put this? I put it um, right along 
this line. Now you can use your detail liner here if that works better for you. I'm going to put a little bit of water in this paint because it is not flowing like I would like for it to flow. And again, I'm using a two round, so if you want to go to a detail liner, you can do that. I'm going to stay up on the very tip toe of this. Like I said, this is only going to show when you have a little bit of reflection on it. Oops. Sorry about that. About time for me to go have lunch with my grandson, so let me finish out here. Or not. And then I went around these on each side on the cup of the wide. like I did a little bit on the handle, so I'm going to get my um, detail liner for that one. And it looks like I went along oh, just went over that stripe. I suppose you could do it that way if you wanted. like all the places that I put that oyster pearl so you can see it better in the reflection of the light. All right. Okay, back at this project. It's been a couple of days since I've worked on this, so we're going to get going on some shading on this cup. We're going to start out with some blush pink. And we'll need some wild berry out. And a little bit of black green. Okay, these are shading colors. Let me spritz my palette over here. Get some water going. And now we're going to grab our shading brush, and you can use an angle brush or a flat brush. I think I actually used an angle brush on this project, which I don't, don't normally use. I think I might grab my curved flat because I may want to use a curved flat on this project. I'll grab a couple sizes. The curved flats are the ones that are made by Low Cornell, which are no longer made. So you can't get these these particular brand of brushes, but um, the brush guys have this uh, silver silk brush, which they call the soft curve. And as you can see, it is the same. The bristles are a bit softer on the soft curve, which makes it just wonderful to paint with. So I'm not really sure. I'm gonna get these wet. I woke up, filled up with water. I'm not really sure which uh, brush I'm going to use here. I think I'm going to start out with the angle brush because I've got some kind of tight places I want to get into. So I, I'm starting with a damp brush and I'm going to go into my uh, blush pink and load it on the toe or the pointed edge of the brush. And we're going to begin shading. I think bef actually before I shade I want to transfer on this particular um, line. I find out what I did with my graphite paper. Well, that's my white paper. Where's my duct paper? There it is. Sorry about that. I might have this ready to do first. So I'm just going to put in the outline of my 
marks here. So we got a leaf here. We're going to have a bud here. You don't want it to be too dark of an outline, so when you get ready to paint, you might need to um, take your marks back just a little bit. So see, I've just got the outline of it, so I know where I'm going. I shouldn't need this on here anymore because really, uh, you might want to transfer maybe this, these couple of leaves in here later. But for the most part, you just kind of need to know where placement is. You have to trust yourself. You can do this without lines on there. I mean, you've got the outline shape, so the rest of it will fall in line. Okay, so back to our blush pink. Okay, so we want to start shading back here. A little bit. We're going to go around this cup. It's going to help us define some areas. We'll go a little bit underneath that hand, handle just for some shading. Now you can see I have my paint extremely sheer. I'm not putting solid color on there. That's because I had water in my brush and it mixed with my paint. So as I was loading, it was softening that paint in my brush. So we'll go back here. And I'm giving just the softest pressure here. I'm not, not giving a lot of pressure. I don't need a lot of pressure here. We're gonna, I'm going to be up on the tiptoe here. If you want to go to a smaller brush, you can. But smaller brushes, you have to go back and load with paint so frequently. So if you can learn to adjust a bigger brush to work in a smaller area, that's going to help you out a lot. It's going to learn, teach you a good brush control. I'm going to go underneath here. I am just barely just kind of whisking that across there, just laying down a little bit of paint. I can see it, but you, I don't know how well you can see it in the camera. Just a light layer. I'll slightly darken that under there just so you can see it, maybe. There we go. Okay. A little bit more water in my brush. A little bit more paint. We want to go underneath on our cup here where things are going to lie. If you need to erase back your lines before you do this, that would be a great idea. So this is kind of a tight area down through here. And it's going to be mostly a, a darker color of paint value down through there. We can come back and darken everything, but you want to start out a little bit lighter. Build your layers. That gives your piece a little bit more depth handle on the inside there and let's see I think I might have did a little bit on this edge out here on this edge I'm going to put a reflective highlight down here here to give our cup a little bit of roundness at the bottom. Okay. I think 
that's a good start to our first shading. Now we're going to repeat all that, and I'm going to stay right now with this this uh, blush pink, and just try and get a little bit darker with my color. I'm still just using a very sheer color, and just very lightly, light pressure, laying some of that in there. We're just going to go over the areas that we had just gone over. A little bit around that, a little bit of shading. Move it down here. Underneath here, I'm up on the tip of the brush when I'm in those really tight areas. Just kind of go up on that very tip and then I'm just going to lay it a little bit flatter through the center. Still giving just the softest of pressure here. Every time I load, I load with water and paint, and then before I go to my piece, I touch my paper towel, or my brush, the tip of my brush to a paper towel to remove out any overly excess of paint. repeating all the places that we that we did. I'm going to kind of walk this over just a little bit. I think I need it to be a little bit more shaded because our highlight's more on this side, so I want this side to be a little bit more shaded. So I'm just going to kind of walk that over. And a little bit more underneath. Here. A little bit more water. Okay, maybe not quite so far down that that way. Got a little bit lighter. Okay, I think we did two of that color everywhere. And now we're going to deepen our shading with our um, wild berry mix. So we're going to, let me see how I did my, we did, um, I said I did wild berry and black green as my mix, but I think yeah, wild berry was probably too bright. That's probably why I mixed black green with it. So, let's see. I just brushed mixed it, so I'm just going to get a tiny little bit of that black green. And it's kind of a, a little bit of a sheer color. I just want to darken up this wild berry so we don't have to get a ton of different colors out. So you see how that's just kind of dirtied up that that pink. Touch your paper towel. Maybe touch it again. I had a lot of paint on the tip there. And I don't want it to be quite so dark. I'm going to work it into my brush a little bit more so it will soften that color. Okay, we're going to go around everything. We don't need to bring it out as far as we did. We're just kind of creating a little bit of darker shadows, you know, where it's a little bit more shaded. Definitely need it darker back here. So we have that leaf there and then the cup, so that'll be kind of a darker area back there. darker right there. We'll come back and repeat that. It needs to be just a little bit darker. Okay, we're going to go on all the places. We're not going to bring it out as far, so I'm basically going to just line with the tip of this brush right down here. And then here, we'll go a little bit 
more on the tip. I've, I've got my brush kind of kind of down, but not flat, okay? And not up on the tip either until I get over to here and then I'll go up on the tip. This very corner here, kind of bring it down on the corner. It's a little bit more shaded over here. Here. Want it to stay on the pink when you're mixing it. Don't don't go to the green side. We're just making a, a darker pink. Alright. Underneath here, get a little bit more water. Soften that down with my brush. I'm gonna go under here. Now right through here it'll be fairly dark because it's got the um, front part of the plate coming up that's kind of hiding that. Want nice sheer colors here. starting to dry so I'm going to have to dampen and move a little bit. I'll have to come back and do that side again. Right up here, I'm going to go all the way up onto that a little bit. We don't need tons here, just kind of tuck it into some places. Wait, I'm out here on the edge of the handle. So along this edge where the flower and leaves are going to lay, I didn't do the whole edge with this second darkened shading. I just tucked it into some some places. After we paint it, if we feel like we need to add more, we can certainly do that. I know it still looks rough because we haven't put any highlights on here yet. I'm going to take some of this color and go out here on my dark color. So I'm definitely going to want to be up on the tip here of my brush. there. Alright, I'm just up on the tippy toe of this brush. Just kind of going around the edge. We won't see that part of the cup there, so that's where that leaf lays, so that's why we started it right here. this edge a little bit more because this edge is in the shadow more. And we need to bring some shading right along here. here. 
I'm going to deepen this here because it's more in the shadows. And I think I'm going to go on my rim here on this side a little bit more because it needs to be darker. I think I need a little bit darker back in here. This is where you can just kind of look at it, do a little bit of tweaking. Make sure your dark areas are dark enough, but not too dark. These are actually a little bit darker than what was in my original. Okay, that's pretty good for our shading. Let's let's add some highlights on here because that's going to make a world of difference. <clears throat> okay, let's highlight with some white. Now we'll have to do this a couple times because white tends to fade down in there just a little bit. We're going to go along this edge, kind of brighten up this edge just a little bit. Down here, it's going to be a little brighter. This side. Do some on the handle. I'm going to do it on the tip, I think. And then down the center here. I'm going to have some highlight right here. This is where our brightest highlight on the cup is going to be. I want to kind of shape follow so it looks, you know, more rounded. And that was a back to back float. I need to darken on that pink right there. Reflective highlight here. A little bit of reflective highlight here. Highlight down here. Adjust your brush to whether you need to be on the tip or on the. I need to shade down there on that side. I'll put a little bit of white in here just to brighten this up just a little bit. here. Okay, I need to go back to a little bit of shading. Um, that mix. Maybe 
maybe just a little bit darker underneath this edge. I'm going to do a little bit down here because that's a little bit of a darker edge. Okay, before we add our second highlight layer of white on here, let's do some. I'm going to take my white, clean water, a little bit of water in it, thin it down. And we're going to do some, some dots and dashes, kind of highlight on here. And we're going to keep this just slightly past center. handle to look like it's a handle. Okay. Just checking out my original one to see where else. Alright, I'm going to go back over some of these and brighten them up. That's our bright edge. Okay, let's add a little bit of highlighting back on here. You want to have pretty much straight paint. You really don't need a lot of water here. here. along this edge. Bring it out just a little bit. A little bit through here. I need to bring that out more. Reflective light there. Just intensifying some highlights. Just a little bit. I didn't do this on my original one, but maybe just a little bit of reflective light on that outer edge out there. A 
I'm up on the very tiptoe of this brush. some of my light buttermilk. <clears throat> I need to take that very sharp edge down just a little bit. So I'm going to do that with some buttermilk. Light buttermilk I think is what we used. shape up. definitely more shadowed on the side so that I did. I think I just removed everything I put on there. Just very lightly tap that. Kind of smooth it. Okay, I think it's going to start looking a whole lot better once we put our flowers in there. I've got a little bit more of the bottom of the cup showing on this one than I do on that one. to that tip of that brush. Too far out here.
This is just where you got to let your eye walk around your piece and see where it needs to. I know what the problem is here. <clears throat> That's because this should be fat and kind of sitting on top of that. I'm going to back off of the highlighting here and we're going to start putting our flowers in. <clears throat> okay. Let me. All right. <clears throat> They're going to be blush pink and white. And I used this uh, 3 8 inch angle. But I started out using a quarter inch, so um, depending on how well you, you know, what brush you like to use more, you can do these with a flat brush. Doesn't have to be done <coughs> with an angle brush, excuse me. And um, you're going to double load. I want to have fresh paint out, so even though I've got these two colors on my palette, I want some fresh. So we'll have our blush pink. Is that what we did them in? No, we did them in Wildberry, didn't we? No. Oh, we did all three of them. Okay. Alright, so we need all three colors out. <coughs> Alrighty. So, you'll want to practice these on some paper. Let me grab a piece of scrap paper. Okay, you're going to want to practice these. Let me move this off here. I don't want my paint bleeding through. Grab my clipboard. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush, a damp brush, fully with the blush pink. the majority of the water out of my brush. just want it damp. Tip the toe or the pointed edge into the white and the heel into the pink. Okay, kind of work them in together. More white. Okay, and then you're going to go to your piece and you're going to start stroking in some back petals like this and water's going to soak up all my paint so mine may not be as pretty now when you load from now on you're only going to pick up the white and the dark pink the white and the wild berry <coughs> you don't need to put this on your brush again unless you wash your brush out okay so we got our three back petals all right <coughs> And we're going to put two inside here. You don't want to have gobs of paint like I've got right there. So you might want to touch your, your brush to your palette before you go. I need definitely more white. I'm going to wipe my brush out and just go into these two. But I need that color in my brush so my paint isn't completely transparent. Okay, so now we're going to go around, make a, a U here. We made upside down U for the center. And now we're going to begin stroking. I'm going to start <coughs> actually out here on this outer petal and lay in a stroke and a stroke. A little bit more water. I might put a little bit of that pink in here. So since I'm painting on white paper, you can see the 
outer edge. It would be white, but I'm making it more of that rose color. Okay, so what I did there was I laid my brush down and I pushed with the toe of the brush and the heel of the brush I kind of left right where it was at and then brought it up on its chisel edge. Okay, now we want to lay in the next row. You want to connect your petals if you can. Now I'll go into a little bit more white so you can see it. You want it blended well. Now I'm going to add some petals in here. And we'll just finish out by pushing out some petals here. And then we're going to be up on the toe of the brush and just scoop, 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 add some scooped petals in here, wherever you feel like you need one, okay, and finish out the rows like that, okay, and if you already know how to make beautiful roses, everybody makes roses different, you can just do your own thing. Everybody does them different. So, what if you've learned a specific way, then go with it. There's so many different ways that you can do stroke roses, and they all look beautiful. It really just depends on how much detail you want in a rose. Okay? All right. Let's get our piece back over here. Get my instructions back up. <coughs> and, oops. We are going to do. Let's see if I can get all my line drawings are stuck everywhere. We're going to do our roses. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe my brush out. There's no need to wash it out. Maybe get a, get it a little bit damp again, and then wipe the excess out. Get me some fresh white. <clears throat> I'm just going to barely load this brush up with this pink. Heel into the wild berry, toe into the white, and blend it. I've got a lot of paint on that edge. So I'm going to try and blend that down in there a little bit more so it's not quite okay. So our roses, we've got one right here, and I am going to erase my lines back just a little bit. I don't need to so much on my leaves, but on my roses, where my roses go. It's going to be hard to cover those lines up. Okay, so we're going to start here and we're going to do our stroke, stroke, stroke. Okay, stroke, I need a little bit more white in there. Stroke. I'm not giving a lot of pressure on my brush here. I do need a tiny bit of water and a little bit more of that berry. Put my center in. Definitely need more white. Center. Okay, I'm going to create that center. I'm going to start adding some stroke leaves or petals out here. another stroke around that center. More berry, more white. Another stroke around that center if you want. And then start pushing the outer edge of the brush to create. And if you need, I'm up on the 
toe of the brush here. And if you need a smaller brush, then just go get a smaller brush. Okay? We're just putting some small stroke roses in here. Get a little bit of water in my brush and then remove most of it. Right, I've got the berry, wild berry, and the white. Still got a little bit of that pink in there. We've got a rose here. So I did four petals in the back that time. Two. And then one. Come around this way, and around this way, and around this way. You can put as many layers that way as you want to. We'll do some strokes out here. Just by pushing and lifting. You're pushing with the white edge and you're lifting with the other. over here. So I'm going to have this one turned. A little bit more white. I'm moving to different areas on my palette when I feel like my paint is getting muddy on the light edge. <clears throat> Second row the center and not giving a lot of pressure because I, I don't want to make great big ginormous roses here That one needs a little bit more pink in it. We'll, we'll um, be glazing over a little bit of these, I think, at the end. Okay. I'm going to do this one down here because this rose is going to lay over that one. And I may not be putting them in the exact spot that they need to go in. So on your um, line drawing, if you... Um, hmm, which paint? If you want to, like, when you place your pattern on your design, if you want to um, put, like, a circle for the size of your rows, then you'll know how big your rows needs to get. Pink here. I'm just going to tap some of that pink in there so I can lay some white over it. Okay, these are just delicate little roses. there. And wipe the tip of that off. Tiny bit of water. Okay. Um, we're going to go in and do this big one that's right here. And it looks like it might be kind of turned this way. And it can lay over these other Roses, no problem. This 
one actually is a pretty good size one. Okay, there's that one. We've got two more. We're going to put this one in first. And then this one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Yep, seven roses. Okay, just want to make sure my count was right. I'm going to need some fresh wild berry, I think. white just a few strokes okay one more big one over here strokes on that outer. So, a little bit more white. Do three. And two. And do one. Our very center layer. You can do as many or as little layers as you want. some outer layers. And you can leave it more open like this if you want. Just push a few strokes in here. And it's a little bit a little bit more open. Okay. Um, I think that's all of our leaves in there. I mean, all of our flowers in there. Let's see our leaves. Because this leaf comes here. So, and then this one. There's just a little one that sticks back there, a little one back there. I'm going to have to adjust the direction of that one. We've got one here. I'm going to have to add some strokes in here to some of our roses, like this one. Needs to have a couple more strokes in it. Should be pretty close to that one. And then we'll put an extra stroke in this one down here. Let's see, we need to bring a stroke for this one down. And then I'll put a stroke on top of it. Let's see. Where else do we need to add a few strokes? Because this 
leaf comes up here, so I'm thinking this flower needs a couple more strokes in it. Maybe this one could get a stroke. And we've got a leaf here, a leaf that comes up here, so we're going to need some strokes in there. Doesn't matter which flower it goes to. small leaf here, we've got a leaf here, we've got one hanging down here, one here, we've got one in here, one there, one there, and there. And one there. Okay. This flower needs a little bit more shaping. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush off. We're going to darken the centers of those flowers by going into our wild berry with a tiny little bit of my black green if it hasn't dried out. Goodness, I think it has dried out. I really want that just a touch darker. Ooh, okay, not that dark. Wipe my brush out. I'm gonna get some water. I've got too much water. Okay, that looks like a uh, pretty decent color. So I'm going to wash my brush out. Try and get a lot of that paint out from painting those roses. Now you can go back to your roses at any point and just load your brush with some white. Let me show you. Just some white. And stroke an edge. Put some brighter petals in. Just straight white, no water in your brush. And you can brighten up a rose that way. Just give it some little pops of color for a highlight. Just a shape of a, of a petal if you don't like it. Okay. Alright, back to that mix we made. If it hasn't dried out, I'm going to get some of that on the toe of my brush. And we're going to put some of this down in the centers of our flowers. Bit of depth down in there. Okay, and if your flowers aren't pink enough, you can wash over them with some color. I would use this color, and that is a option. So let's say you want this to be the shaded side, just wash some pink in there. 
Same here. You want it to be more darker value there. And this one could be a little bit darker. This is a very sheer color. Very, very sheer. And we'll put some dark over here where it's going to be closer to the leaves. And here. Okay. And that just kind of gave them a little bit, perked them up a little bit, I think. And again, if you feel like um, you need more highlights, you can go in with a round brush and just kind of touch on some of the um, tips. A small round brush. I'm not sure this one's small enough, but I'll make it work. And you can just touch on the tips. Do a little bit of detail highlighting. Just a little bit. So you can't really tell where that petal is or where that petal is. You can just kind of tip the very tip of it. Okay, I think this one is over that one, so I'm going to brighten that petal right there. And then this one I feel like needs a little bit of brightening. And then a couple on this one. Okay, and that's how you can just bring out some of the uh, tips of the, the petals. But try not to lose your, your shape in here. Okay, you want to keep your, your nice shape that you made your roses. All right, now we're going to paint some leaves in. And our leaves, let's see. Oh, let's paint these rose petals in. And down here. Let's see, they're painted in with a mix of uh, wild berry and blush pink. So we'll just get those base coated in. And blush pink, wild berry. Just do a brush mix of this color. A value that's in between the two, so it's going to be a medium, medium pink. And then just shape your petals. However you want them to be shaped. I'm going to go right over my pencil lines. I'm going to, my graphite lines. back and repeat that so I can darken that. Okay, our leaves. Our leaves are a mix of Hauser, <clears throat> Hauser Medium Green for our first uh, coat because the Hauser Medium Green didn't cover quite as well as I would have liked. So I'm going to mix a little bit of black green in there. But then when I do my second coat, it's just going to be the Hauser, the Hauser Medium Green. And I've got way more paint out here than I need. My green doesn't look very well mixed. Let me mix it. Alright. That green, that light green still looks not the best. Okay, so we're just going to darken the green and paint our leaves in. We're not going to worry too much about the um, 
edges right now. We'll create those little raggedy edges, pointed edges, when we add in, you know, some other colors and stuff in here. So, we got that one there, and then this one is supposed to be a turned leaf. Not really sure. I, I need to put some more white in there because, see, I can see the underneath of rim of my cup, and I don't want to see that. Probably didn't mix enough paint here. And it's okay if you didn't mix enough. You know, I just mixed a small amount. Your leaves do not have to be perfectly the same color. I mean, nothing in nature is exactly <clears throat> perfectly the same color, so don't... Uh, Alright, I need this leaf to be pretty good size. I'll have to put a stroke in there probably. Go around my rose. I could make that one just a tad bit bigger. You can put your lines, your pattern lines on here if you want. Mix a little bit more of this. Okay, I've got this one out here. And I'm going to have to adjust its shape just a little bit. Just from my outline that I drew, because I put my rose on at a different angle, so... And if I get my leaf over my rose and I don't want it like that, I'm just going to come back in and stroke. When I'm done with the leaf, stroke a, a leaf a petal on there. So like this one, I need to definitely stroke a petal in there. Okay, we've got a big one here. Stroke that petal. Green does not want to come off. Yeah, we want this all filled in with green back in here. And then one here. All right, so I'm just going to go off camera and get my second coats on here, which is just going to be the Hauser Medium Green. Shake up your bottle really well. Make sure it's mixed well. I don't feel like mine's mixed really well. So I'm going to work on that. Okay, now I need these to be completely dry first, and then we'll come back and finish out our leaves, stroke some extra petals on there. We're coming along with this very, very nicely. Okay, while my leaves are driving, drying, I feel like I've lost some of my base, base coat of the um, light buttermilk in here. So I'm just going to Kind of pity pat some. And through here. Just 
stay off of my pink line there. that a little bit of porcelain look with that light buttermilk. Add just a little brushing of that in there. Just by pity patting and blending it out. to look at my original one and see where I have it still kind of bright. Take my white down just a little bit right here. Put some of that pink back in. And I think for my pink lines here, I might do the same. I just want that highlight, I think, to be on the very edge. Just have a tiny bit of paint on my, the toe of this brush. Just tapping a little bit in there and then taking the water brush, water edge, and smoothing it out. a little bit better. We're going to have to shade underneath this stuff. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to go with my um, wild berry and a little bit of green. Really work that into my brush. I'm going to make it as soft as possible. bit too much so wipe my brush off. I got plenty of paint in there. Around my rows here. A little bit of water. Ted. 
tiny bit darker right here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Alright, now I'm going to go and get my second coat on my leaves, and I'll be right back. Okay, so um, after I put my second coat on there, I put my uh, lines on there, and I went ahead and did my second coat down here. So we're going to start by uh, shading our leaves with our Hauser dark green, or yeah, what is this? No, black green. And I am using a six chisel brush. You can go down to a quarter inch angle brush if you like. Remember, smaller brushes, you're going to have to load way more frequently. Okay, so we'll just start over here with this one. We're going to shade. At the base. Now my line is going to disappear because of the type of pencil that I put it in with. Just darken it up just a little bit at the base. Now this flower lays over it, so I'm going to go around that a little bit. These leaves aren't going to require a whole lot of detail on them, but it's the way that we're going to paint them, they're kind of going to look like they've got a lot of detail. They're not the focal point, they're just, you know, added fluff. some petals over some of these leaves when they're done. One more here. Actually two more. Now this one I made have a little turned edge. If you don't want to do a turned edge, you don't have to. So we're going to go at the base of the leaf. And we're going to go up on the tippy toe. Around that. And then along this back edge. Put a little bit of a turned look. And now with the same brush, we in the same color, we want to um, create our center vein. So we're just going to be up on the chisel edge and pull a stroke from the base out. created our little 
center vein. Now uh, we want to get some olive green out. And we're going to highlight on our leaves. And I can't remember on this one. It looks like I kind of did some some veining with that black green so let me do that real quick it's very easy to do you're just going to load it on the corner of the brush and pull some veins out from the center and do a center vein here Just on the very tippy toe of the brush, just you know, pull a few out. Very thin, very thin. I got some lines there. All right, now we're going to take our um, olive green, and I think I need to shake it up a little bit more. Get a little bit thicker. Mix things up well. You see how this one's got a nice depth to it, and that one is flat not mixed well there. Okay, now when we put this color on, it's going to look bright, 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 but um, it'll settle back down in there. So here's where we want to kind of create our points on our leaves. By just touching and pulling. And we're creating a beautiful highlight and kind of go down. Put a little bit of highlight next to a vein or two. And it's very simple. Touch and pull. And then a little bit next to the center vein. you want your edges to be more pointed, you can just push out and make a little bit more pointed edge on there. You might have to mix a little bit of Hauser green with it. It's just Kind of sawing motion. So you're just going sawing, 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 sawing. Like that. Sawing, 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 sawing. following a little bit next to our center vein and then we're going to do this edge saw 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 and you can pull some of that into the leaf I need to redo this 
edge. I really love this color, this olive green. It's, it's just a gorgeous color for leaves. Olive green and leaf green are my two favorite colors to use on leaves. Sawing, 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 sawing. And just pull a little bit back in there. Let's have a little bit of sawing here. A little bit of highlight. There. Water. One leaf left. smaller ones you can stay more up on the tip. And I'm just going to pull some of this and stroke that with some more. Okay, and that should uh, finish out your, your leaves. I'm just going in next to the center vein and making sure I've got a, a nice highlight on there. If your leaves are too bright, um, we can take some of the black green. I think I might go ahead and do this because I've gotten some of my color a little bit too far out and reshade at the base and around things. So I'll just reshade at the base. It's a little bit of a transparent color, this black green, so it won't take over. I'll still keep our beautiful highlights on there, but we'll kind of push them down in there just a little bit. This helps if you've gotten your highlights a little bit too um, far back into the shadow areas, then we can just fix that right up. Okay, don't think I missed any there. And our leaves look pretty good. Um, I'm going to stay with this six chisel brush and um, get some fresh paint out here. Get our wild berry and some white. I probably won't need much wild berry on my brush, but definitely want white in it. some of these maybe just a little bit more of the wild berry in there and try and get some of these petals over our leaves. I think I better add a little bit of light buttermilk in there. Opaque it up a little bit. Okay, so this one we're just going to stroke. Going the wrong way. Okay. 
just have way too much water in my brush because over here where I don't have water might be helpful. Push out some strokes here. Smaller brushes, you gotta go back and get paint quite a bit. Just keep going around, seeing where you need to lay. These are very transparent because they're over that green. A little bit of pink in there. Wild berry. Come back with my white. Okay, I think it's, they're starting to look pretty good. see if there's any edges I want to brighten. brightness on it. Okay, I think I'm going to leave the roses right where they are. Let's work on our little petals down here. We're almost done with this piece. So let's see, with the loose petals I shaded with Wild Berry and Black Green Mix. Wild Berry, Black Green. Okay. 
It makes almost a purple color. That's a little bit too dark. Let's get a little bit more wild berry in there. I want it to be a pink petal. Just going to shade this on all of the right sides. Actually, on this one, I did it on this side. This one's getting a little bit of highlight on that edge. Oops. Stuck my arm in my green paint. I don't want to transfer that on there. That would not make me happy. Let's highlight them with a mix of blush pink, which I need some fresh out here, and some white. Blush pink. Right. Just a little brush mix. Oh, goodness gracious. Got green paint all over me now. because I am green everywhere. Alright, I'm going to highlight on the opposite side. Pity pat, pity, pity pat. Over here. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out because I don't want any color in it but white. And we're going to go back with some white. want any water in my brush either. My white paint seems to be a little bit on the thin side. So I'm going to put a little bit of white on here. I'm just kind of pity patting it, jiggling it. I'm going to give that um, petal a little bit of movement. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush out and go into my wild berry. A little bit of that. I'll get this back to, to pink. Maybe just a touch more white back on there. Because those petals up above are pretty light. Just the, the wild berry. And go back over this edge. And those are probably good enough for our loose petals there. Okay, white well, angle out just a little bit see that and now we have our border to do and shading down below and we're going to shade around the inside of the border a little bit so we are going to tape off with some green stretchy tape if you have it 
If not, you can use masking tape, but you're going to have to tear it into small pieces and work your way around it. So if you've got some of this green artist tape, I sell this on my website, um, it kind of you can kind of pull it and stretch it a little bit to, to help it form um, where you need it to go. So um, let me move some things here so we can start taping off on this. All right, let's get our tape around the border of this now. So my uh, quarter inch green um, artist tape here. I am going to, I tore off about a 16 to 18 inch piece. You don't have to tear off that, that long. And I'm just going to pull it and shape it around that line that I put on here. on it and forming it and shaping it and bending it okay and I'm gonna cut it right here so that I can start up the other side. I might cut it back just a little bit more because it's laying over that line right there. Give it a good, good sharp angle cut there. It's just pulling and pressing. Pull with this one, press with this hand. time as you go around this tighter curve here. Alright, we want to make sure we have that pressed down. So I've got some gaps in it here. I really don't want to have those gaps. and pull it a little bit tighter so I don't have all those humps in there. Gaps on the inside line, not a big deal. It's this outer edge where we're going to be putting the paint that we want to make sure it's nice and smooth. And down on there, good. If you uh, have your cup and saucer that's over the line a little bit, you'll have to tear a couple of small pieces and go onto your plate here like this one. It, it was over the line, so I uh, had to cut a small piece of tape and cover the edge of the plate right there from there to there where it would interfere with the line. But when I put this one on, I see I didn't do that, so that's good. I don't have to worry about that. All right. It looks like it's on there pretty good. Looks pretty straight. 
So now we're going to get a makeup sponge. And I I use my makeup sponges till there's nothing left. So when I've got a small piece like this, it's the one I want to use to, to work it around this border here. <clears throat> so we're going to get some light buttermilk. And it's going to take two or three coats of this to cover up that background. And we're just going to work it into our sponge. Don't get your sponge overfilled. These are not absorbent, so if you get tons of paint, it's just going to make a mess. So you just want enough to tap a light coat on there. Get it set on that tape there, and it will keep your, your layers from bleeding under. I've never really had any issues, if my tape is down good, of it bleeding under, but if you don't have it down good, you could have a slight bleed under. So this is this lighter coat is going to help seal that edge. Try not to go past your tape. That's why I, I got a smaller piece as opposed to that whole whole big piece of um, makeup sponge. We just want a, a small piece to go along this edge. We're almost done with this piece. We've got this border and some shading to do. And now I think we'll be finished up. Light coat. Okay, that's my that's my first coat. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then apply a second coat on here and possibly a third. So when I get all my layers on and dried, I'll come back and we'll remove the tape together and you can see uh, how sharp and crisp the edge looks. Alright, I applied three very light coats of the light buttermilk. So now I'm just going to remove my tape. It's not completely dry yet, but you want to kind of remove your, your tape before your paint dries anyway, in case it, you know, you got it too thick on top, it won't lift any paint. So, ooh, isn't that so pretty? So we've got a little bit of shading down here and then around the border. Um, I'm going to grab my eraser and make sure all of my lines that I can erase are erased. And I think it, uh, I think it looks pretty good. All right, so our shading underneath, we're gonna use our wild berry and black green mix. Wild berry. brush, curved flat, soft curve, flat brush, whatever you would like to float with. Alright, I'm going to use a soft curved flat here. So I'm going to mix my um, black green <clears throat> with my wild berry here. This little bit darker pink, almost purpley color. And we're going to go underneath. Too much paint. Let me grab, wipe the paint off and grab a little bit more water. I want this to be a little bit more on the sheer side.
We'll do a little bit underneath our petals here. Okay, we need to let that dry and darken that a little bit. So while it's drying, I'm going to uh, go around the border. And we're going to do that just with the um, wild berry. Work it into your brush with a little bit of water so it becomes a nice sheer color here. And then we're just going to go around. Stay off of the white. Just softly go around this inside edge here. We don't want anything stark. We're keeping this very soft and kind of romantic looking. And you can use this cup and saucer pattern in these flowers. You can put it on anything, but I love it on this heart-shaped surface. It just seemed quite appropriate for this design. V there, so I'll just slightly round that, and it's just a very subtle shading. So you can see the difference here between the two. Okay, I'm going to go around this other side. It's up on the toe there because that's a very tight little little V in there. Come up to the plate and then go on the other side. Just a very soft pressure. A bigger brush will, will help you take your paint much farther and if you've got it loaded well with uh, water and paint, it'll take you as far as you need it to go, generally. Unless you run out of paint and then you got to load again. I'm just going to go back to any spots that I feel like need just a scooch more. Okay, that's looking really nice. Alright, let's finish out our shading below which is that mix. Get some water in my brush. I'm going to soften this out pretty good. A little bit more pink. I wanted a little more on the pink side than the green side. All right, I'm going to touch my paper towel, the tip where the paint is, and remove a little bit. And then we'll just go back underneath here. And darken our shading here. Right there, I want to push a little bit of paint to that. It's a dark little area right there. Okay, so see how we shaded just right there and then pulled it to a thin shading right here. So it's wider, the shading is wider here than here. It makes the petal look lifted, so there's a little bit of shadow underneath it. Okay, maybe just slightly darker here in our shading. I want to make sure it's dry. Okay, I think this 
this might be a done project here. So, that's wide angle out so we can see it all. Off my, my painting plastic. Oh, that looks so pretty. Okay, here's my original that I did here and the one I just did today. The only difference in this one is it's already varnished, so it's got a little bit more of a brighter glare to it. And then uh, I think they both turned out great. I've probably got a shading a little bit darker down here, but um, I like this shading, so um, they both are very pretty to me. Again, you can go back in and wash some pink onto your um, roses make them a little bit darker in some areas like I did here we did that once on here but I came back and added some white uh, strokes back on top so it kind of covered up some of that so if you want uh, some of that um, pink shading on there it's just a little bit of wild berry like we can put it here where this one lays over that one, and here, and here. And then maybe here on this one, and here. I just kind of want to tell which, which rose is on the top here. And next to our leaves. Okay, that kind of pushes some of that back in there. Go by this leaf here. You can even put some of this color on your leaves if you wanted. That finishes up this project on this video. I hope that you have enjoyed watching it and I hope that you paint it or that you paint it along with me. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you uh, like my video and share my videos. Co leave your comments. I love to respond to your comments. And um, I thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye bye, everybody.